Hey everyone, Lokai here, and I've got a real interesting puzzle for you today. Being Thanksgiving, so happy Thanksgiving. Uh, you'll probably end up seeing this on Black Friday, though. Uh, but this right here is a Where's My Hammer puzzle by D. Dixon. Uh, this puzzle is a sequential discovery puzzle in that, like the other ones I've shown you, it has multiple steps and maybe things you'll have to use in it to get all the way through it. It is also a uh, puzzle box. You can kind of see it's got a lid here. It's locked shut. Got a very intricate facade of tiling here. Uh, this one really caught my eye and I waited a while to get one. A little history on this puzzle is that it's been around for a couple of years. It's made by a guy named D. Dixon. Uh, he makes these in his own workshop. He has a few other puzzles too, like Blinded 2, I think is one. I, this is the only one of his I own. And as far as I know, you have to buy everything from him direct. So you won't find these on like Puzzle Master or JP Games or any sites like that. You'll have to get it from him. Uh, soon up, there will be a release of these on Cubic Dissection, which will be Black Walnut variant, which will look like this color down here. This itself is from that run. This one is one of a handful, uh, seven to 10, I guess, that were made with a gradient pattern. So when Dee bought the wood uh, for the builds of these, and there's lots of different woods here we'll get into, uh, he got some pieces that went from the, this nice brown here to a lighter color. And he managed to actually take the pieces, cut them, align them, and keep the, the gradient going throughout the puzzle um, on each side here. And it, it makes it very exquisite looking. Uh, very nice to see this color change. Also, you have, and I can't name them all, I don't know them. Uh, we have a, a zebra wood here, a leopard wood right there, wenge. I know there's a true mahogany, as I call it. I will say this piece right here has like a really cool shine that I don't know if the camera will pick up. It's almost like a, like a satin right there. And then it uses a lot of the, the same woods on the pieces here that make the tiling on the front. This puzzle always caught my eye, um, but it, it always sells real high at auction. So I wanted to get it direct from the creator. And uh, as I went through puzzles and I wanted, see, I like to have representative puzzles of different types. So like I have a spheres on the way, that will be my packing puzzle, you know, that I'll have for a while unless I find something else that I fancy. Uh, I usually have a lock around. Hey, Mystic. Uh, I usually have a lock around. Thank you. Um, I usually have an SD puzzle as a centerpiece, some type of a big one, a box, something cool, a unicorn, that kind of thing. Uh, and then I normally have, um, well, here, I'll just tell you what I've got right now. Like the DDD burr set, these burrs. So this is representative of burrs. You can do a lot of different burr puzzles with the 12 of them. And you can get more from Brian Turner here soon. I just have to wait on the brass ones to be made. Uh, and then you can make even more puzzles. Uh, a Rick's Cube or a Polycube set where you can make, you know, 100 different cubes out of a set of pieces. Uh, that would be a, re a good representation of interlocking cubes. At one point, I had Excalibur, which was a good representation of both of those ideas. So I like to have one of those type of puzzles around. So I normally have about 10 puzzles around and about six that I'm really trying to hold on to to represent the art and uh, the style of puzzling to people. Uh, and so therefore, um, I do have prerequisites. So I had my eyes on this one because I really liked the way it looked. And uh, I wanted to have that as a, as a collection piece. So the way I want to show how this puzzle works, I want to do it a little bit different. Uh, I would rather, um, this. there's not a lot of videos about this puzzle out there. So I'm going to show you how it works, but I want to kind of lead into parts so that as if you're working on it right now and you're stuck on a part, it might help guide you where you need to go in order to move your puzzle further. Um, without actually just blatantly showing you, hey, surprise, this is the next move. So that way you can watch along, and if you're not completely finished with the puzzle, you'll, you'll get a good warning of when to stop watching. So 
when you get it, what do you see? Well, first off, the craftsmanship on this is amazing. These joins are flush. These bezels are straight and perfect all the way around it. The tiles, the the uh, fitment of everything, the tolerances here, once you start puzzling is great. The choices of colors and where they're put are just great here. Uh, so my hat is tipped. Now, when you get something like this and you see all these tiles, one thought would be obviously maybe like a slider puzzle. Um, definitely these things were the first things I wanted to play with before I even got it, just knowing that they were there. Uh, as a puzzler, these are like screaming to be played with or pushed and pulled. Uh, when you move it, what is that? So that's all it really gives you. The lid doesn't, you know, doesn't do anything here. Something's in it. Now, is it a rod rolling back and forth, a marble? I mean, what is that? That's something obviously freely moving there. Is it like a pendulum? Is it a hammer? Is that the hammer? Is it just hanging from a, you know, like a, a, like an anchor and just swinging back and forth? But I will point this out. Listen, you notice that one side sounds wooden, the other side sounds metal. So that that's that tells you something, I'm sure. Now, what I was saying about the pieces, obviously, we start trying to move stuff here. Nothing really wants to move. You can start moving the, or, well, if they did, you know, pushing on all these pieces here, trying to get something to move. Now, if I was making a puzzle and I had a piece that slid, right, I wouldn't want it right here because, look, I have two free sides, so that means it can wiggle. And it'd be really obvious. And even if you shook it or moved it too hard, this thing might like, you know, like go at an angle. So if you look around this whole thing, you obviously don't want, you know, a piece that's locked in on all four sides. That doesn't make sense. That's not got anywhere to go. But there is a piece that has three sides. And that one's going to call your attention to it. So now I'm going to do a move. So if you haven't done any moves yet, now's the time to stop watching. Uh, I've given you enough information to move forward there. But right here, this one covered in three sides, slides just right off. A little magnet holding it on there. Look at that fit. <laughs> let's, let's do that right. I was looking through the camera. Oh, maybe it doesn't want to slide like that. There we go. This wasn't doing it right. And then you see a hole here. Now it's a hole with like wood behind it, but gravity, hopefully, as it turns, let's get, it's going to be hard to see there. As you turn it, a hole opens up. Now it's completely open straight through into there. And there's something in it, obviously. So your first, you know, what, what are you going to try to do? You just go try to see if something comes out doesn't seem to want to, the hole, there we go, let's open it completely up, straighten it up, we go like that, and out comes a, a brass bearing. Uh, this should be noted as it being brass, it's not magnetic, so that's important, because you know it's not gonna interact with this. So now you have a brass bearing, a little magnet on a chip, and uh, I was stuck here for, for a hot minute, uh, not afraid to admit it. Uh, there's rules usually given with a puzzle, like don't shake, don't spin, no excessive force, blah, blah, blah. I don't remember getting anything like that with this one. So I put the ball back in, shake it up some more. It just seems to be on that little, it stays there, that falls in. Not much, not much room for it in there. So not a whole lot going on with the ball so far. Sorry at the camera. So at this point, I was looking and studying every angle. And nothing else would move from this being moved out of the way. That was first. And I started looking for like just things that seemed off. And one thing caught my eye right here. I don't know if the camera will catch it. 
But this tile right here seemed to be sticking up on the edge over here. Like I could push it down and it went down a little bit too. And I thought, oh man, the glue it must not be fully glued on. So I asked someone about it and they were like, don't worry about it. Well, that's all I needed to know. But I can't do nothing with it. There's nothing there. And then I noticed this one here seemed to shift a little bit. And if I put the magnet near him, look at that. It's reacting. So let's turn it. Look, it's, it's just there. Oh my goodness, it shot away. See, it's repelling it. So if you put it upside down through the wood, it actually sticks there a little bit. And this one, it, it sticks to this one. But the funny thing here is, watch this. <laughs> this magnet's a lot stronger. So now I'm wondering if these tiles are held down by magnets, and this magnet's super weak, how do I get them out? And if you ever ask anybody for help or clues on this, the first word that comes across your DMs is force. Well, I don't like spin moves. Never make a puzzle with a spin move. And as nice as this is, I don't want to be forceful with it. You know, but maybe since you can't go left, right, up, or down, there's really only, and I can't pull it out with a magnet, there's really only one other thing we can do with this. And I would stop right now if you haven't done it yet, because uh, I'm about to show you. You push in on it. And the first time I did it, I had to really shove it. Now that I know exactly where to press, it's very, I mean, that's not bad at all. I wouldn't call that force. But to find it, like right there, just hitting right there really hard, barely moves it. It'd be right here. So that pops up, big old magnet on there. Still nothing useful magnet-wise, though, because, well, I'll show you. But in this hole right here, there's something, you turn it over, there's a dowel rod. It's a wooden dowel rod. So that's a tool, I'm sure. And if you look deep down in there, there's a hole. And if you can flash a flashlight down it, which I'm using, well, I've got this one here. I don't know if you'll be able to see it. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a pit of doom. There's, there's nothing, you can't see into that. There's nothing... So it's a tube, and if you really get to look it inside, you'll see that there, it doesn't have any openings inside. It's just a tube. That should imply something. Well, we know that there's something going on with a magnet here. I'm not going to touch it yet, because when I covered the whole body of the puzzle with a magnet, I found something interesting here, too. Look at that clue. Let's go. Let's use uh, the lighter magnet, because this is lighter wood. Look at that, bounce, turn it down, just locks, locks, locks. There's four magnets here. Now what would four magnets on the bottom plate wood of something with, mat with wood that doesn't match exactly mean? And you have a tube hole going straight through the puzzle here. Now we know there's a magnet here, We've already discerned that, and we have three walls. So I would stop. If you haven't already figured this one yourself out, um, you might want to pause here um, just on puzzling, maybe, because it should be pretty obvious. Just go ahead and slide that bad boy over. A little magnet on there. There's a hole there as well. Uh, this hole here, same deal. Straight down to the bottom. No openings, no shafts coming out of it. At this point, you might be really stuck with this one. You know, uh, I was for a hot minute. I could get all this stuff off. Couldn't do a thing with it. I was like, okay, when does this come into play? I start putting it through the hole. I would turn it ways, drop the ball down, shake it up. They wouldn't go anywhere. Nothing opened. I was dismayed. Uh, I started thinking about the name of the puzzle. See, when you open this before, the first few or whatever, I guess there was a hammer hidden inside this thing somewhere. Maybe the thing we were hearing going clack, 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 but that's the ball we know now. Uh, but yeah, so it was called Where's My Hammer? And the story behind that was that Dee's son, I think, uh, is one of his testers. And when he was first uh, testing the puzzle for him, he yelled it out. 
a few hours into testing it because he couldn't figure anything out. Where's my hammer? He wanted to smash it. And uh, when I couldn't figure anything out with this at this point too, uh, I was redirected to the name of the puzzle, which reminded me of the noise at the beginning. And if you listen, there's still something in there, right? And I've tried and exhausted moving everything, trying to pry things, put things in holes and switch their spots. I tried it all. And uh, the, the, two, the two things that were clues given to me over the whole time of Owen this came back, force and uh, the hammer. And uh, I went and I talked to someone I knew had solved this. And we went back and forth a little bit. And finally, they were like, look, you're doing everything you're supposed to do. It's just not behaving for you the way it probably should be. Uh, D makes these things really tough. And you got to be a little rough with them. And so in the end, I ended up... Now, you might want to stop here because I'm going to say what I did. Uh, I ended up slamming this thing on a book, which did nothing to it. Uh, it was protected. Uh, I had to slam it on down to a book. And uh, I had learned, because I had smacked this thing around a little bit, love-hate relationship going by three weeks in. Um, you know, so I slapped it around a bit. And I was getting clues. I don't want to slap it too much, but you'll hear it. Right? Oh, I'm going to hit my, my phone. No, I don't want to slap it too hard on here to do that. You'll hear it click. And I was like, wow, I'm getting a clicking, but nothing comes out. Nothing does anything. And it wasn't until I, because I told everyone that I was talking to, that I was smacking it on the right, and I was getting a click. And they're like, keep going, keep going. Well, it's not the right. It's the left. And when I put it down on the book on the right side, it came, it finally did what it had to do. And now that I've done it a few times, I can do it without having to be wholly aggressive with the puzzle, but it is pretty aggressive. And here we go. You hear that? Oh, and it reconnected. Nope, maybe it didn't. There we go. We've got a steel ball bearing. It's attached to the metal, obviously a magnet in there. And it's a, it's a big chunky magnet, obviously. Um, because it's, it's hard to get loose. And at this point, you know these tubes don't go anywhere. This thing's pretty much a dead end. We've gotten two things out of it at this point. So here's what you need to do. So pause this, the final step. If you don't want to know, jump out. But here it is. If you've watched my other video, other videos, you'll know of this tool presentation before. It's, it's been used in a few puzzles. Uh, this is going to make one thing. The best way to make it, in my opinion, is to go ahead and drop the steel ball in, the rod, then the brass ball. That way, well, you'll see. And then you just push. See that? bottom and the magnets. Now, as I open it, the metal ball will stick to one of the magnets. That's why I did it that way. And you can catch that one in your hand. Look at that. It is finally open. And surprisingly, there's a lot of open space here. Um, you got the dead wood. I think that's burned in. There's some, there's some you know, ridging to that. So it's, it's taken some of the wood in, but it does seem like a burn or like a, um, brand even maybe, uh, the wood in here is the, uh, black walnut being used. Some of the gradient wood. Uh, I'm not sure what this is right here. It's part of the lid too. You'll see that there's a bar here attached. And then this is actually part of the base right here. This little ledge. That's what's locking the lid and the lids just, as uh, Josiah from the Mechanical Discord said, a red herring. And you'll see this is the only hole that goes through, this hole being just the receptacle for the rod. So this is a fully dissembled, disassembled, I don't know what word I just made up, uh, disassembled, where's my hammer? 
and here is the stuff, as I like to call it. All the stuff that comes out. Oh, where are you going? And this is pretty cool. Uh, I think this is a beautiful puzzle. I think that this has some clever stuff going on in it. Uh, everyone says it's highly unusual, like never seen before. I wouldn't say that. Uh, magnets and balls and rockers. This thing right here is really cool. I don't think I've seen that before. The little gravity window. That's my personal, that whole beginning part, removing the chip and finding that wheel and a ball coming out. That's my favorite part of this puzzle <clears throat> as far as the aha moments. But mostly for me, this is just something awesome to look at. Unfortunately, it won't make my permanent collection. As much as I think it's awesome to look at and I did have fun solving it. Uh, my permanent collection is meant to be shared with others. So if someone ever came over, which I know with everything going on in the world right now, I haven't had a visitor in a year. Um, but with everything going on, that's not really how life works. But, you know, if I ever do have a visitor and they wanted to try out my puzzles, I can't let them try this puzzle. I just can't. Because I know at some point I'm going to have to hint to them to smack around the puzzle box. And it's just like my reservation with Pachinko. Pachinko had some fiddly bits and it was super heavy. And someone was going to drop that thing on a glass table or a foot. And uh, that's not as experienced with these things. I'm holding parts with my hand, holding the puzzle in certain grooves. That's from experience of dealing with these things where you know stuff's just going to fall out, fly across the room, babies are going to eat it, cats are going to throw it up. I mean, it's just, you, you have to think about that when sharing. Now, some of us are, you know, in a position in life where we can buy these things, put them on a shelf, and that's all they really matter to us anymore. But for me to keep something of this value, it does need some utilitarian uh, in it. And this has it. It's a great puzzle. It stumped me for weeks, and I'm happy to have solved it. I'm even making a video. I skip some puzzles with videos. Uh, there's some puzzles I did recently that I thought were really cool that I didn't make videos on for very specific reasons. I haven't done a video on a Rex puzzle for that very reason. But I like this. This is cool. I just wouldn't be able to share it. And that's, uh, that's because I just... Mm -mm. Maybe, <coughs> excuse me, maybe, um, you know, some people are like, whatever, it's all good. It's just a wooden box. Let people smack it around. Uh, but I just don't want to encourage people doing my puzzles to want to smack any of them around or give them the sense that that's possibly a method. And you got to smack this one. This one you got. <laughs> You got you to gotta treat it like it, it stole money from you. And uh, and also with the opening here, don't put anything in it because this wheel might get blocked. Nothing else really seems to be, you know, by, uh, hindered by anything being in there but the wheel. But it would really suck to have something in there, have the wheel get caught and never be able to get the parts you need out. Um, although technically you just push this down and shove a pin through there, I'm sure. Uh, but nonetheless... This is an awesome puzzle. I won't let the fact that I can't keep it forever personally uh, hold back how I would rate this. Uh, on my rating system, uh, we're going to take a little curve here. I would give this one, honestly, like almost a 10 on looks. I would give this one like an 8 or a 9 and puzzling, divide and multiply the quotient of the difference of those two into a subnomial function and add in happiness and appreciation to track my personal value uh, from it because it is my review and we end up with an 8. And not an 8 out of 10 or an 8 out of 9 or an 8 of anything, just an 8. You know when you're walking down the street and you see someone that's pretty attractive and you're like, oh wow, they're an eight. And then you're like, wow, they must be living that eight lifestyle. And then you're like, oh, shame on me for thinking about valuing people as numbers. So it's just eight, like the infinity symbol. Uh, this one is probably going to last a really long time. So this is Where's My Hammer by D. Dixon. If you can find them on Etsy at Deadwood Crafts, 
Give him a holler. He might just make you one custom order. Who knows? I'm not speaking for the man. I heard these things are getting retired. And uh, why not? I heard he sold a couple hundred of them. And I'm sure he wants to make new puzzles and with ideas and skill like this. Uh, there's a lot more exciting things to come. So you guys, I hope you enjoyed. Let me show you a quick reset on the puzzle. This thing's just simple. You put the ball in, magnet. You put the brass ball in. And it goes, oh no, it's how magnets work. And then you put the little, oh, we're locked in. Now, of course, you got to put the bo bottom on. Look how thick that piece of wood is. That's actually really great. And it uh, actually didn't click. Let me uh, check that real quick. We might have put it in backwards. See how that just goes in now and you can't get to it? I'm going to cheat this one, guys, so I don't have to smack my box. Let's go ahead and turn there we go, hear that? So there is a preferred orientation we have found. That goes there, magnet to the bottom right, click. Magnet on the right on this one, snap. Magnet on the bottom, click. And you have a fully reset, where's my hammer? Set to be smacked by a baseball bat by one of your friends if you share it with them. Or just save it for yourself because this thing is pretty awesome. You guys have a great Thanksgiving. Enjoy the rest of your holidays. I'll try to get a few more puzzle videos out. And if you like it, do whatever you feel like doing with it. Have a great day.